Well, you hear talk of uh, these squash and pumpkins and uh, watermelons uh, setting more male flowers than females. See that tall stem on that? That's a male flower. See these? They're all males. They're real tall. The females aren't that way. And there's a little watermelon there. It's set a bunch of small melons, so who knows? We can have a good season. And that is a female flower that is set a melon. And see up here it has male flowers to uh, get the pollinators in here. They're usually up higher and more pronounced. Here, look down over there at the cucumbers being picked, and uh, while I was watering these, I saw four more that needed to be picked. You really sometimes need a partner with you picking these, so they can stand back and look through the shadows of, uh, see, uh, uh, those two posts right there? See how they stand out? That's the way a pumpkin will, and you can see the smaller ones in there, but you'll see a big one that you missed. And these are our Fourth of July's. We have uh, picked all the fruit we're going to pick today. I'll be back in a few days. We try to pick them if they're red or even close to red. There's a lot up here that's a little closer to red, but I picked the tomatoes earlier this morning. We did lose this butter boy. Uh, I picked a bunch of butter boys today. We've given away a bunch, and I think I got two bags inside the shed. And I see some yellowing leaves. There's either a deficiency here or it was in need of some water. When we got all that rain the other day, three inches, it's hard to figure out when it's used all that up. So I gave them a good uh, dose of rain today. And here's my super producer. There are several in here that are the same way. But I picked 85 tomatoes off this a little while ago. I got them in a separate bag and there's probably 25 or 30 there that'll be ready by Wednesday. See I'm getting some more yellowing up here. I don't know what's going on because see I ran the irrigation you can see the ground's wet. So it should be and that might be getting wet from over here and not there but this plant either got dry and it's uh, Usually the disease starts at the bottom and works its way up. But there's still a ton of juries. And I'm getting them up to the tops. And I've got this one to cross over. This is the one I tied together. And see I can get these to follow it. All these are getting taller. There's my yellowing better boy. And see, these are bent over. And these are about ready to be able to be swung around and lean this way. And that's the one that was bent over the other day. I didn't have time to pull with it. And it's just uh, still alive. And see, I've crossed those just by pulling them to the other side. And I've run one to that pole. And I'll eventually be able to run that to those just so they'll keep growing. The nice thing right now is you don't have to bend down too far to pick the tomatoes. And the tomatoes are getting fairly pretty. And, uh, in fact, that one needs to be picked. Just since this morning, it appears to have gotten a little ridder. And we're picking a lot of squash. And I'm watering the okra now. You can see it coming out the little drippers. And it's slowly starting to grow. Now, I had powdery mildew on this. I noticed it last Wednesday when I was here. And, uh, by the time we got back here and came out and looked at it Saturday, boy, these leaves were really loaded up with it. Uh, there's two ways of getting rid of powdery mildew. One is a teaspoon of baking soda in a quart spray bottle. But since all mine were affected, I needed a gallon or so. And what you can do is use neem oil, not insecticide soap. That has neem oil in it, but it also has a soap in it. You need the straight neem oil, and you just add that to uh, the gallon of water as the measurement requires, and you pump your sprayer up, and these were covered. You can see some minor damage there. Now, I sprayed these good and tried to get down below it, but see, now I can see the ones that didn't get sprayed, and I'm going to do this again. Now, within six or eight hours, 
or less you will see a difference and in 24 hours you will see a big difference but see when I sprayed these yesterday I missed right there and I didn't get under that leaf so I'll take a little uh, bamboo stake with me and I'll pull the leaves back and forth and spray it but all these were loaded with uh, powder mildew and neem oil will take care of it it is a fungicide and it's organic and there's a squash bug nymph used to be one and our uh, beans are finally setting flowers and this weed bed from the onions is still a weed bed and the corn doesn't look too bad as tall as I am and it was tasseling the other day so you ought to be able to see a tassel or two because I could see it coming up yeah there you go oh it's got a healthy tassel on that one and the uh, pollen on the tassel lasts 15 to 20 days depending on the weather and that's why if you have smaller ones and bigger ones there will always be something tasseling you can definitely see my yellow tomatoes from here I don't really know what that is but there might be a mineral deficiency but it might have got really dry because I didn't water it that much Wednesday and then we didn't water it till today so it it might have been drying it's been cool but it hasn't been warm now the thing about powdery mildew it'll show up anytime you have cool weather and damp weather and your plants are too thick and mine are definitely too thick we planted a lot in here but normally we lose some and so far we haven't so normally we would have lost a third of these and it wouldn't be so crowded now I can take this fence down and get a little bit more air circulation in there but uh, that's what causes powdery mildew the plants are too crowded too damp not enough air circulation and cooler temperatures and you know we've had cooler temperatures the last three weeks but that looks 1000 percent better than it did yesterday before I sprayed them and I'm going to spray it a little bit more and in the next video the leaves should be a lot healthier and today is Sunday the 10th of August and this is the cukes and the divas are starting to put out some decent sized ones that's about as big as you want them to get grown in your garden and the market moles is doing a little better and of course my calypsos and here are the rest of my calypsos and there's uh, 85 cherry tomatoes in this bag and that came off the last one in the world. all those tomatoes and I picked them Wednesday and today's Sunday and that was the last bag I was picking and here are these bags now I got those off of three plants I got those off of four plants I got those off of one plant and I got those off of one plant four seven eight nine I got eleven seven eight nine oh there's a bag across the street there's another bag with maybe not quite that many in it that's that's well over 100 that's more than I like to put in a bag because if that is 85 you know that's more than 100 so this since Wednesday we have picked four bags and four and a half bags so I have to, have to do some quick math but we probably uh, picked we probably picked 800 to 1,000 cherry tomatoes since Wednesday. That's how you can get a lot of them, folks. And I've lost one plant, so we only had 13 of them to start with. 